there's a difference between hip hop and rap. And can you let everybody know what, what it is? Well, first and foremost, of course I'd answer it right. I'm the one that named hip hop. Exactly. I started it. I gave it the name. I gave gave it this main three principles. The power of Jim. Ooh. Hi, this is Jim T. Chong, the walk star on the power of Jim, and we have a power pack show for you today. You're not going to want to miss some of the information that's given here. Uh, let's just say that we have a lot of the history and origin of hip hop by one of the legends himself, G-Man, and also six-time kickboxing champion Robert Parr will be joining us. This is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, and I am with... Jim Meyer from Remax Gold, and this is probably going to be one of our biggest shows because of this is the day that we talk to the legend in the world of hip hop, the guy that actually invented it, and G Man back in what year? You 73? Yeah, well, we started as a little crew in 1973. A lot of people see you shouldn't, one person shouldn't really take props for the whole thing because it was, it was a, it was a, it was a bunch of kids. It was a bunch of uh, young kids. And we were at the age where we could not afford to go, not afford, but we could not get in the clubs and promote this and make it a business. So they got older heads that was 21 and older in order to get in clubs to promote it and make it a business. Because you got to see Sugar Hill uh, Gang was the first rap record out by Sugar Hill Records, Joseph Robinson yep. Sr. And, Joe, and, and Sylvia Robinson. But they wasn't the first rappers. They were just the first ones to have, to, to be blessed, being able to have a song manufactured produce, promote it, market it, and put out and for, and, and, and di for distribution. So they wasn't the first one. They just was the first ones to get songs out on that level. And and then second followed up by Matt, Melly Mel and the Furious Five with the message. But us kids are the ones that really started this thing and yeah. made it go to where it went. You know what I mean? Well, you know, was younger than them. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things with the Sugar Hill Gang, uh, you know, that is one, that's an iconic song. And of course, the message, who can forget that? But, um, you know, just getting it down to the beginning, it sounds like you have definitely, uh, you know, been really a, a foundational element of hip hop. Can you first off just start with a G Man? What is G Man represent? Well, I represent, I represent uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You know, I, I represent God's man. I'm God's man. It's like, I'm not going to sell G, my right? soul. That's a G, right? That's a G, God. Right, God. and, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not going to sell my soul. You know, I'm not going to conform to the negative powers that be. I'm not going to get on there and talk about sex, thugism, drugism, sex, and violence. That's exploitation. So I'm not going to get on there on no record and do that against my people and try to tear them down. I'm not going to talk against women. I'm not going to do, I'm not, I'm not concerned with being politically correct. You know what I mean? Because those people yeah. never supported me, them, them big corporates that's making all these billions and millions. They never looked at for me. They never came asking about the real man that's a part of the origin. They never done that. They have even had people go in colleges and try to teach hip hop, but you can't mm. go back to the origin. So that was a waste of time. And it was kind of a slap in the face for hip hop, because if you can't go to the origins and you can only talk about from whence you converted to hip hop, then the, the people, the fans, the kids are going to miss out on something. So and with me, they got think about it. I went and got my bachelor's in psychology so I could understand the psyche of man. So I got a bachelor's in psychology so I know what I'm talking about why the mind is working, things are going like there is. Then I went and got my, my, my cooking degree so I could be have something to fall back on. And then on top of that, I went and got my doctorate in the theology of music because I understood who the minister of music for, for God was. It was Satan. That's why he controls all the music and all the stuff neg is so negative and so devilish down here and so heinous that I had to understand. So I understood that he controlled that. So I went and got versed in, first of all, my spirituality, get, make sure it was up to par my knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from being uh, uh, a, a, a young uh, God body, 5% from, from, from the day one of me coming up, I understood what the mathematics was about from, from yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and, and already already on my a level of knowing where tomorrow's mathematics is. So I'm going to always be a God body in that perspective. So, and my thing is, you have to understand, you have to do your study, you have to read your book. The book, in the, even with a lot of stuff that has been watered down and changed in most books, you can learn something from them because you have to arm yourself for the spiritual warfare, for this real fight, for this real good music. 
entertainment is supposed to be fun and any depiction mm -hmm. of doing something negative, that's not fun. Now it's considered acting, but know the difference between acting and reality. You know what I mean? Understand the difference between the two. You're not going around killing all these people you're talking about. You're not going around and sleeping with all these women that you're talking about, you know, right. sometimes. You know what I mean? So, and, and if you is, you tell it on yourself. So that means that how can we trust you? You a self snitch. You snitching on yourself. <laughs> you gonna snitch. If you snitch on yourself, you don't give a damn about me and nobody else. Uh, yeah. You know, one thing, um, you know, hip hop finds its origin. You were, uh, you know, talking about how Sugar, uh, the Sugar Hill Gang kind of came out, everything. With hip hop, you know, hip hop and, and just the release of, uh, uh, Rapper's Delight, that was the original song I remember, and The Message by The Furious Five. You know, was that the beginning of things, the era? I know you were giving us a little history. That, you can take us back the, a little bit. That was, that, was the be, that was the beginning of having records out in, 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 in the masses, for having record, records played on the radio, for having records in stores. That was the beginning of that era. But as far as the beginning of rap, no, that was not the beginning. That's just reality. They just was, they got their break uh, before everyone else to get it out in a popular medium, forum, if you will. Uh huh. Well, I think, Jim, you asked a really important question about hip hop and rap. You want to go ahead and just uh, ask that again? I think it's a race. Well, a lot of people don't know the difference. So, uh, so hip hop is really a culture, rap is, is music. And no, rap is a small culture. aspect of the culture. It's an aspect of the culture. And rap has gone in a certain direction today. I believe with your new song, uh, Be Where You Are, and, and some of the other stuff that you're doing, you're trying to take make rap more fun. Am I right? Well, I'm trying to show you that, you know, you, you got to have some content now. You got to have songs that people want to really go and party to. I hear a lot of this, a lot of songs, the mumble rap. I don't knock nobody from doing what they're doing. Then let's not get it twisted. I'm not bashing my hip hop heads and my sure. hip -hop people hip hop because things have to evolve. I understand that. I'm the first to say that it should evolve. <clears throat> but what I am saying is everybody can't be a thug and a gangster. Everybody can't do that. That's why God shut everything down. It's not just because of the, the powers that be and the negative people out there that shut the world down on the economy. God got something to do because God can stop anything he wants in the blink of an eye. So if he shut everything down so you can wake up, so you can arm, so you can be armed with knowledge, so you can learn some things, so you can see the difference between freedom and not freedom. And when I say freedom, freedom, freedom of the mind. You have to study and learn to become freedom of the mind. So you, you and you, you you have to allow the universe to work for you. You have to be a part of the universe. And I and I and I, and I speak about stuff on that mm -hmm. metaphorical sense because Nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants mm -hmm. to sugarcoat it. Hip hop yeah. is a is a culture. It's not just rap. Rap is a small aspect. You got you got rapping, you got rhyming, you got freestyling, mm -hmm. and rapping is telling a story. Depends on what your rap is about, and you're telling a story, you know what I mean? Then if it makes sense and it has content and it has lyrical uh substance, then then you're doing your a great justice. But if you just on there talking about the same thing everybody else is talking about it. You can only talk about yeah. killing, murder, sex, and drugs, violence, and all that. Right. So long, and for in so many different ways. How many ways can you say the same thing? So yeah. you, you have to say something else. You have to do something else. And I, and I think uh, entertainment is supposed to be fun. We are yeah. in the being like yeah. business. We are in the being like business. You see what I'm mm. saying? We want to be like because that's how we get ourselves. If, yeah. some, if people don't like it, they ain't gonna get you, you don't get them yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you know what I mean, and I, and I beg to differ a little bit on that because you can have a negative whole vibe about you, and you sell more records, which is crazy to me. Yeah. You know what I mean, the, it seems like the, the 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 more violent you are, the the more times you've been in prison, I, I don't get it. You get brownie points for stuff like that. You become more infamous. You become more popular. That's crazy in society. Yeah. And the only time people want things to change is when they hit them at mm -hmm. home. You, they a lot of people want to disrespect you and and under respect you and your family and your kids and your sisters and your brothers and your mother and all the women in your life, but they want you to over respect the women in their life. Yeah. Well, you know, um, here's, you know, here's the other thing that I, I've seen uh -huh. so many people get into rap or, or any kind of art and then they, and they stick to that and, and they think they've got to be a struggling artist. They got to become the multimillionaire or have nothing and live off that girlfriend or whatever. 
And what you do is you went out and you done, you're, you're a chef, you're a bodyguard, uh, you're a businessman. And it sounds like you could teach a lot of the youth today about basically how to go out there and live your dream because you are living your dream, uh, but also pay the bills when things get rough. Uh, you know, we, you, you've got so much, such a resume. Uh, I, I don't think that any, at any time you're going to be on the street. And how, how can you get that message across to the youth today that you got, you got to have skills and you can't just know how to put a rhyme together? See, I, I mentored quite a few people, you know what I mean? And, and I, I created an artist development curriculum. It's a 90-day curriculum where I teach, the, teach artists about from everything from their copyrights from A to Z, basically, your copyrights in, in the first awesome. 30 days and your business, making sure all your stuff is in order. Your second set of 30 days is, is all about your music and, your, and the last set of 30 days is all about your presentation and how you conduct yourself, your, your image mm -hmm. and stuff like that and performing on stages and stuff. So... You know, so I do teach and I speak at churches. I go around and I speak at uh, uh, seminars and, and private events. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm so deep because, you know, I'm so deep when I get, especially at a church, because I'm one of those, you can't, you can't sugarcoat stuff with me. I got my, I got my doctorate in the theology of music. And by doing that, I had to learn that book. And I not mm -hmm. only learned it, I had to study things. I had to understand what I'm speaking about. I didn't change who I was, but I did was become a better person. You know what I mean? And, and a more prolific thinker and speaker. So I don't play, especially when it comes to these pastors. That ain't nowhere while our brothers and sisters are being shot down in the street like dogs and being yeah. murdered. Them pastors are nowhere. And the reason why they ain't around, people don't look at it. That's because of faith-based initiatives. That's because they get kickbacks from the government so they don't want to lose their money so they don't come out and support what they're supposed to support. Faith. So they're being paid to keep their mouth shut, basically. Exactly. So, you know, and when you deal with reality, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. Michael Jackson, Shirley Caesar, and Bill, and, and uh, Barry White told me the same thing at different times, different places. They told me verbatim, gee, man, they don't see you coming. That's well, deep. It, it really is, you know. Just thinking about just the history of everything, like, you know, again, just taking – some things that, that many people might understand from an iconic point of view. Again, uh, let's say the message. It talks about just life, you know, life on the street, you know, and, and learning. I, I, and it really started out, it seems, to really convey some really strong messages and stories. Um, Sugar Hill Gang, Rapper's Delight, was just all about having fun. And, and a little, right. you got a little bit of the culture, right? Where do you see that things started to change? Because obviously rap, hip hop, can you give us a little bit of a direction on how it started there I'm and kind of how did it get to here today? I'm glad you asked that question because mm -hmm. that, you struck a nerve with me because this is it's so deep that how it came and went from the positive to the negative. I, mm -hmm. I, like when I was a bodyguard and I was being trained by the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines to be a close quarter bodyguard. And I've never been in any branch officially, so I was what they would call your, their plausible deniability, because freedom ain't free. So right. some people and somebody had to sacrifice themselves in order to go get things accomplished so that you could have the liberty that you got, so Correct. that you could sit on your, on your, on your, on your, uh, your, your, your crown or your, or your, or your, your big chair out in, in your house and play like you somebody important while somebody else is out there putting their life on the line, like myself, to mm -hmm. help protect people that probably don't even deserve what they get. But I'm glad mm -hmm. you asked that, because in the early 80s, when I mean, this is deep, then you gotta get your ears on for this, I'm doing a drop right. what we call Jews on you. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna drop these Jews on you. In the early <laughs> 80s, I was, I, I was hired to be head of security out in, in, uh, 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 out in, out in uh, San, Bino, San Bernardino, California, up in the mountains. And this was in the early 80s, way back, it was before it was it was just before the Bobby Brown tour that we, that I actually went out on, and uh, I'm I'm out there and they got about thirty armed officers. And when I say officers, I'm not talking about police department. I'm talking about private security. So I was head of security. I ran the whole the whole gambit for them. You know what I mean? So they flew in all the radio execs, TV execs. All, all the all the people, the who's who's of who's who, the, the big promoters, the, the mm -hmm. stores, the, the record stores that had that, that own everything, the rockin' billies and all these little pop, mom and pop stores, but the big chains, the Sam Goodies and all the all the record stores, 
you know what yeah. I mean, that was big, all the execs that was in the yeah. entertainment business that was running things and told them the ones that stayed, because some people had were left because they were, the guy told them he wants you to stop putting your resources behind positive hip hop. So that blew everybody's mind. And yeah, that was mind. actually an edict. They actually didn't want a positive message. Now, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, let me, listen, listen, cool. dude, you, and, and I'm standing at the door. Mm -hmm. After escorting, we escort the people that didn't want to listen to what the guy was talking about, the people were talking about, and what they were proposing. They had to leave the compound. They had to leave the house. They had to leave. So they, they made them leave. But the few that was there, and it was representative of some big people, big, big ball players, basketball players, who was all the, you know, you, you see where I'm going, a bunch yeah. of top people. Not uh -huh. mentioning, you know, I don't want to mention any personal name, but they right. were all a part of this and they represent and or they represented it. They told them to stop putting their positive their resources behind positive hip hop and start putting their resources behind the gangster rap, which was just starting to come out with the NWAs and stuff like that. You know, more hard, the hardcore rap. And it was starting to change, transcend into the to that. So and people was like, why would we do that? They said they told them point blank because when you invest and what we tell you to invest in, you're gonna make money because kids are gonna buy into this fast life. They're gonna buy into the, they're gonna buy into the drugs, the colors, the gangs, the 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 the, the, narc the narcotic selling. They're gonna buy into this fast life because they all want to live live fast, live rich. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So absolutely. And, and so that was becoming so popular, and, and with the negativity, the gang violence, and and all of the robberies and all everything, the gang, the the the, uh, the crime rate was going through the roof. You know they was the crack was coming into the into the into the neighborhoods, so it was a yeah. lot of money being thrown around in a negative way. So they said invest your resources into the gangster rap because kids would listen to that and it enticed them to go out and do crazy stuff because of the wavelengths, the 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 the, the levels of of consciousness that are being sucked siphoned out of their head and not thought about because they was in they were starting to get into the the illicit drugs, the young folks. So and and the gang violence and the colors and the do rags and the, and the crip walking the bloods the all of them the the, the G's the, the gangster disciples the all the negative entities that were out there the kids were starting to look up to that so yeah so they told them to stop putting it and the reason the main reason why they was they said they would you would make so much money on that investment is because they were starting the program for privatized prisons. They yeah. were privatizing mm -hmm. prisons. And then you got these people that are on these TVs that could call themselves good people and everybody loving them. And they they selling all types of products for corporations and they running around and, 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 and playing sports for, and making you think that they're so popular and they putting their millions of dollars to have your butt locked up. They investing yeah. and making money on them. And then they have contracts with the government. They, was, they were telling them you would have contracts with the government that if these private prisons that you invest in are not kept full, you can sue the government and get paid for it. That's crazy. Because you have a contract with them and their mm -hmm. job is to put asses in, them, in themselves, period. Mm -hmm. Well, this goes really, uh, this goes really deep. And, you know, uh, G-Man, if you don't mind adjusting your camera just a little bit, um, just uh, bring up it up a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Um, huh? But yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. And, and you know, top of your head, yeah. music plays such a crucial role in terms of society influencing the youth, right? So, what what you're talking about? I mean, it really it really is sobering to think about what what is the thing that you're trying to do to change that? Uh, to just or are you trying to? Yeah, I'm not trying to change nothing. What I'm trying to do mm -hmm. is, is put into your head that. The young folks, especially that thugism, drugism, and sex and violence is not hip hop. It's exploitation of the people in the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, I want them to, to know that it's okay to be an individual. You don't have to follow people. You don't have to. You don't have to be a follower. God said you are. A, you are a leader. You are a lender, not a borrower. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You have to. Mm -hmm. You have to understand your worth. You worth more than that. You deserve yeah. more than that. Especially my sisters that's out here. They're selling their souls. What good is a man to, to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Think about that. Right. That's real mm -hmm. talk. And then stop being stop being video vixen. Stop giving your body away and, and not knowing your worth without getting something for the long term. When I say about your body, that means respect who you are. Respect mm -hmm. respect what you what you need in life. Respect your future. Everything that's out there in that street, been there before you got here, is gonna be here after you gone. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you you released this new song, Be Where You Are. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got a really, really uh, incredible beat. I, I, I really you. like it, and, and it's awesome. But what is the message behind the song you're trying to convey? If you are this song to? is a metaphor. Mm-hmm. Actually, let me tell you something. When, I, when I'm a part of a song or a part mm-hmm. of a group or something, mm-hmm. it's timeless. The music you can put on today, and it's like you first heard yep. it, you're still jamming to it. And it leaves them those those memories in your mind that's nostalgic. People, they come up to you and say, gee, man, you're a legend, you're an icon. No, God is the legend and the icon. Let's just get that squared away. Mm-hmm. I give it all to him. So when it comes to the, when it comes to the, to, the, to to be where you are, it's a metaphor for, like, say if you missed a loved one, you want to be where you, they was real tight to you, you miss them. You want to be where they are. You mm-hmm. Say if you, you and your girlfriend is at, at work in separate places, but you miss her, or your wife, and you miss her, and she's on the road, and you on the road, and you want to be home with your family, you miss them, you want to be where they are. In, in the case of, of artistry, like where Michael Jackson always stayed in that creative room, that's why he always reinvented himself on everything he did that made him so so legendary on another level that mm-hmm. most of us as artists, we scared to go into that creative room in our mind, so we stick with what we what is deemed popular, what somebody has paid the radio stations it, 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 promotional dollars to promote them, it's still uh, pay for play. I don't give a dang how you look at it. They paying them, they, they saying, oh, we want you to promote this project so we give you X, Y, Z amount of dollars. So that's pay for play, regardless of the fact. They don't let music that is naturally just good music be played or get that opportunity, unless it's once a week or once in a while where you can smash it or trash it, or it's a jam or it's a, or it's a blam. It's no good or it's good, or it's good. you know what I mean? So real good talent is out here. Michael Jackson says stay in that creative mind, in that room, in your mind where you can always change and adapt to circumstances. And, I, and when he told me that stuff, I had to think about it. It's the highest and the very best asking price. It's a bad thing. 